I know what you're thinking. Yes, this game is worth buying. In fact, go buy it right now. I'll wait. Go buy it, start the 60 gig download, and then come back and watch the rest of this video. GTA 5 has been delayed many times for PC users, but it's finally here. And it was worth the wait. NCIX Anthony has played a lot of games on launch day and he thinks that this is one of the smoothest launches he's ever seen for such a big game. The biggest issues we saw were slow download speeds and running out of space, but at least the servers never went down. For those wondering how this game runs on different hardware, then we're here to help. One thing we noticed right away was how low the system requirements were. According to Rockstar, you only need a Q6600 processor, 4GB of RAM, and a 9800 GT video card. GTA 4 also had pretty low requirements, but that game was so buggy on launch day that even high-end hardware couldn't run the game smoothly. Grand Theft Auto 5, however, is a completely different beast. The most important component for this game is your video card. For a processor, the minimum requirement is having quad cores. Intel's i3 with hyperthreading works as well. Next, you will definitely want this game on an SSD. A large one too. Since Rockstar Game retail version uses over 80 gigs of space, for Steam users out there, you'll actually need over 130 gigs of free space in order to unpack the game. When it comes to RAM, 4 gigabytes will work, but it will have occasional stuttering. We definitely recommend a minimum of 8 gigabytes. We ran the built-in GTA 5 benchmark on many systems ranging from entry-level video cards to higher-end X99 systems with multiple Titan Nexus. We wanted to focus on the video card performance, but we found that as long as you have four or more cores, then the processor won't be a bottleneck. We also ran everything in DirectX 11, including the lower-end cards. Expect some slight gains by dropping down to DirectX 10 on some older cards. The important thing to note here is that Rockstar worked intensively with both AMD and Nvidia, incorporating the game into both AMD's Gaming Evolve software and Nvidia's GeForce Experience. Both game setting optimizers work flawlessly and it should be the first thing you do if you're having performance issues. They tested way more video cards than we ever could and they even offer fine tuning so you can have slightly smoother performance or prettier looking details depending on your priorities. By default, both optimizers try to ensure your minimum FPS never drops below 30 FPS to ensure a smooth experience. First, let's take a look at our i3 system and a 1080p monitor. The system consisted of an Intel i3-4310 processor, 8GB of DDR3 HyperX RAM, and a Kingston HyperX Fury 240GB SSD. With an R7-260X and Gaming Evolved optimized settings, we were able to get an average of 47 FPS with a minimum of 33. At the other end of the spectrum, we had our X99 setup with an i7-5820K processor and 64GB of Kingston Predator DDR4 memory and two Titan X's and SLI hooked up to triple 4K monitors. With GeForce optimized settings, we got a minimum of 38 FPS and an average of 74 FPS. You might think it's weird that we compared a low-end gaming system to a high-end one, but that's why GTA 5 is so amazing. It scales incredibly well to a wide range of hardware. Even with everything on low, the game still looks better than any console version with higher res textures and less objects popping in. But what about for normal gamers, sweet spot users like you guys? Well, here's our recommendations for the hardware you need for GTA 5. Like we said before, get the fastest quad core processor and largest SSD you can fit in your budget. For the video card, we'll break it down by monitor resolution. For 1080p, you'll want at least an NVIDIA 750 Ti or Radeon R7 260X to play it smoothly on medium settings. For higher settings, 144Hz or ultra-wide 1080p monitors, bump that up to a GTX 960 or a R9270X to take advantage of your higher refresh rate or higher resolution. For 1440p, you'll want a GTX 970 or R9280X. You'll get smooth gameplay with an absolute minimum of 45 FPS while averaging around 80 FPS. For an ultra-wide 1440p, you'll want an NVIDIA GTX 980 or a Radeon R9290 for smooth gameplay at high settings. For 4K, you'll need quite a bit more power than before. Two GTX 970s, a Titan X, an R9290X, or even an R9295X2 will all be necessary in order to achieve smooth gameplay with an average above 60 FPS. If you're only aiming for 30 FPS, then a single GTX 980 or R9290X will do, but there's no point at playing 4K on lowest settings. Just go with a 1440p setup instead. 
Now for triple 4K, two Titan X's will be able to handle the game wonderfully. With a mix of high to very high settings, we were able to achieve a minimum of 38 FPS and an average of 74 FPS. That's a resolution of 11,520 by 2160. We tried getting two R9295X2's working in quad crossfire, but ran into problems getting the game to recognize all four cores. It should theoretically work, but maybe it's just because our cards were sample cards. There you have it, an easy guide to what video card you'll need based on your monitor resolution. We know a year and a half was a long time for this game to come out, but all of us here at the studio think it's completely worth it. It's much better to have a fully stable game to be delayed rather than a buggy game released early. Let us know in the comments below what are you running and what kind of performance numbers you're getting. We'd like to hear from you, but as always, don't forget to like the video if you liked it, subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX, and we'll see you later.